Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Lori Willis, and Lori is Executive Director of the Can Cancer Foundation of Santa Barbara. Welcome, Lori. Thank you, Cinder. Thank you for having me. Yes. It's wonderful to be here. Golly, you know, I have been in your facility. It is so amazing. I've been there at least three times for, you know, listening to fascinating lectures, taking tours of your amazing everything. And so uh, I know you're doing important things there and that we're so lucky to have this foundation in our community. And so I hardly know where to start. Where would you, where do you think <laughs> we should start? Well, I think it, it's it's great to say that we've uh, we're so lucky actually to have a brand new cancer center in Santa Barbara, um, and the vision behind the cancer center was that um, we wanted to make sure that patients didn't have to go to LA or go to North County San Stanford or to have access to great cancer care, mm -hmm. and um, for over 50 years they thought about what that might look like, and then in 2017, 15 we started a capital campaign. Um, the Cancer Foundation had the land. We purchased the land in the early 2000s and um, had this vision to build this brand new cancer center. So that's kind of how it, it all started, but it was a dream for many of those folks for many years, over 70 plus years, to have this come to fruition and it finally did. So in 17 we opened the doors and um, we have this fabulous cancer center. Um, it's 48,000 square feet. Uh, it has um, radiation oncology uh, in on the first floor, which usually is in the basement of a hospital, and in, and in our case, it was in the ba basement of Cottage Hospital for over 30 years. In the and, basement of Cottage Hospital for over 30 years. Correct. While everybody was dreaming of making their own facility. Yes. And uh, I mean, to, to credit to my predecessor, his name was Rick Scott, he, uh -huh. he and his team and many of the board members for years had this vision to have this beautiful new center. And, um, and it was just a joy to work on it as a, the campaign and then see it, see it open now for five plus years. And, um, and it is an amazing, it's amazing uh, spot for folks. Um, if you do have cancer, you don't have to go anywhere else. You could be mm -hmm. here, treated here, um, oncology, radiation. Uh, the Cancer Foundation uh, supports the programs and services in the building that are not covered by insurance. And those would be patient navigators, social services, nutritionists, genetic counselors, um, and a wellness program that's incredible. So um, we give about $3 million on an annual basis to the Cancer Center um, for those supportive services. So not only do you get these great doctors and, and staff, you also get these wonderful programs that are anyone in the community has access to. So it's really great. So the, the purpose of the foundation is to raise the dollars for the Cancer Center so you can provide this fabulous service. And I know people, it's great for people that are here. It's really even great for people that don't live here and they want to come here. Yes, right? yes, yes. Um, we mainly support um, Santa Barbara County. Okay. Um, um, because there are other cancer centers in Ventura and Santa Maria. Oh, okay, um, okay, I was going to ask you about that. All right. Yes. Um, and the, the new cancer center is named the Ridley Tree Cancer Center. Yes. So uh, we're so lucky for that. So was it called the Ridley Tree Cancer Center from the from the very beginning when they opened their doors five or six years ago? No, actually, um, I take that back, yes. When we opened the doors, Leslie, um, at that time, uh, decided to make a major gift mm -hmm. and purchasing the naming of the building. And she made us over a $10 million gift to the Gosh. Cancer Foundation. And so we named it after her. Bless um, her heart. Yeah, so, um, so that, that was incredible. Um, and she still, the reason, uh, the story behind that, if it's okay, I share that, is yes. Leslie's husband was treated with cancer um, maybe 25 or 30 years before that. Oh. And at that time, the cancer center was in the basement of Cottage Hospital. And Leslie would go there every day with, with him and, and didn't like the space because it was dark and it wasn't very, you know, happy. And, yeah, yeah. And so she said, um, uh, that she wanted to give to us to actually make that happen so that future patients and their families would have access to sunlight and be a, not in the basement and yeah. have a different experience when they're getting treated. 
That's a great story. I didn't know that. Yes. So do you think when her husband was, you know, going down into the basement and getting treated, did she think about it then or was it years later? I wonder when she decided to do this. I think she always had us in her mind that uh -huh. she, if there ever was a time she could help Santa Barbara community and if ever, this ever did become a reality, she knew that this was an opportunity for her to make a major gift. Um, and so it's kind of it's kind of interesting when you get off the freeway at Pueblo, the first thing you see is the Ridley Tree Cancer Center and then two blocks up she also has naming opportunities at Cottage Hospital. So of course, she yeah. named the whole block. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> I think she probably thought, thought of that before she passed away but um, yeah. that was pretty wonderful so yes. And what what an example she sets really for generosity and giving back to the community especially in areas that you love that are important to you yeah philanthropy um she she was the biggest donation we had ever received oh is that right yes and um and certainly many more came in with the campaign but um uh, that was wonderful that she chose us to to make that happen so so how much did you raise in the campaign to be able to build that building then? So the building, um, the, the cost of the building was $68 million. Okay. Um, that included the land, and the Cancer Foundation already owned the land. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so we um, have a partnership with Sansom Clinic. Um, and when we were building the cancer center, we had two teams. We had uh, Sansom Clinic's team that, and their fundraising team, and we also had our fundraising team. And together we raised $48 million. Wow. So uh, the total cost of, of, to build the building was 68. Um, the Cancer Foundation is the owner of the building and we lease that space um, to Sansom. Okay. Oh, I see, I see. So how long did it take you to raise all that? It was the most incredible. I've been doing this work for 20 years in this community and we raised um, $48 million in less than two years. Oh, gosh. Yes. It was the most mad, amazing um, support from the community and that um, it it was unbelievably um, overwhelming just to think how many people chose and the generosity that's in this community was just so gratifying. Um, very, very, very wonderful. So had Leslie, from the beginning of the campaign, did everybody know that she was going to give? No. No, she kind of surprised us. Close oh, she surprised <laughs> she you. Oh my gosh. She surprised us uh, close closer to the end when when the, when we were trying to get the naming the most the biggest gift. We were trying to get a gift from some several other folks. Yeah. And um, and she trumped everybody and said, "Okay, I'm going to do this, and I'll do it if you give me the naming opportunity." So, oh, golly, uh, that worked out great. <laughs> <laughs> right. Bless her heart. Yeah. Oh so that gosh, that's so great. Wonderful. So, um, so now you're a 501c3. Correct. And so a person can go on your website, I would imagine, and click that Donate Now button. Correct, yes. Yeah, and make a donation to this wonderful resource yes. facility that we have in our very own community. Yes, it's a wonderful, yes. Um, and that I'd be happy to give anybody a tour too. I think that's a lot of times people get afraid to come in the cancer center, yeah. um, but I think they should come in because um, the architect was Brian Cornell, mm -hmm. and Brian um, actually the story behind that is Brian designed the building to um, be reminded of the building. It's, I'm not sure if it's still called the Awani Lodge in Yosemite, but oh, oh, right. He wanted to have it not be like a hospital setting. He wanted it to be warm and friendly. Um, and so it's set back off the street of Pueblo. We have a beautiful garden. Um, the facility, there is no basement. Everything is from the first floor, second, and the third floor is oncology with the view of the mountains and the view oh. of the ocean. So it's quite, it's quite um, the building. Yeah, it is so warm and inviting. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So. so a person could go on the website and contact you sure. for a tour? Yes, be happy to give a tour. Um, the days we usually do tours are when we don't have patients, um, in which are of usually course. Friday afternoons oh, okay. or later in the afternoon, but I'd be happy to, or on the weekends, I'd be happy uh -huh. to give a tour or a group tour if anybody had any interest in coming by to see yeah. the Cancer and, Center. And probably the website gives a little more information about, I don't know, exact services that yes. you provide. For example, the new, um, well, the nuclear medicine that you're that you're involved with there. Yes. Maybe you want to talk a little bit about that and also the, the new CAT scan? Yes, so I'm very proud of this project. Um, 
when we, we had decided the board, my, my current board had agreed to that we would upgrade the space in the nuclear medicine department of Cottage Hospital, which is also the Ridley Tree Cancer Center. Um, and the machines were old, they were, they were analog machines, oh, and mm. technology has changed so much. So uh, we looked into um, upgrading the space and purchasing a PET CT that is digital, which mm. is state of the art, and there are very few cancer centers on the south coast that actually have this. Um, so we um, asked the board if they would support this, and the board said yes. We started construction in 2020. In 2021, we had to stop because of COVID. Oh. And then we figured out a way to cont continue construction. And we actually, um, th that was installed of November of 22. And uh, we started treating patients in December of 22. Um, and it's amazing. And not only do we have the, a digital PET CT, we're also investing in bringing a spec CT, which they do both different things, but both are used for cancer and cardiology and many other things. Um, and that will be, um, the actually the machine is getting delivered uh, next month and we should have that installed in the first quarter of Gosh. 24. So um, that space will become beautiful uh, and we will make it very similar to the, the Ridley Tree Cancer Center currently looks like, mm -hmm. and um, you, this will be the only cancer center in the nuclear medicine department between Stanford and LA oh. that has both of these machines on the digital machines. Gosh. Yeah, I mean, it's like you go in there and those machines, it's like Star Wars or something. <laughs> it's, it's quite something to see. Yes. I would encourage everyone to you know, plan for a tour. We Are could you, do a tour of both the cancer center on Pueblo and we could walk across yeah. and do a, a tour in Cottage Hospital um, yeah. just so they could see that. Yeah. Um, the PET CT especially is used for cancer and they actually can um, take a scan of someone where the analog machine would take sometimes an hour. Uh, this machine can take less than 30 minutes oh. to do the same thing. So if you're claustrophobic or you oh, you're nervous, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we do an incredibly amazing scan and then um, I have to toot our horn about our doctors. We have two incredible incredible doctors, um, a Dr. William Pace and a Dr. David Carlson that read those scans. And uh, both of those guys are um, incredibly brilliant and um, they, they do such great work. So we wanted to actually do that for them too. They've been with the Cancer Center a long time. Yeah, I bet they're excited. They are. They're like two little kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was gonna, <laughs> they're like, oh, we have these great new machines. This is wonderful. So Gosh. that was great. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so a person can go on your website. They can, oh, they can find out more about all the services that yep. you provide, as well as make a donation. Correct. That would be wonderful. And um, really, the way that you raise your donations, I mean, your yeah, your donations for the foundation, is through what, your website? Do you have campaigns? Can somebody sign up to get on your mailing list? Sure, or? sure. Um, we, um, our social media is a great way to, to kind of see what we're doing on a daily basis. We actually oh, have an incredibly okay. great social media gal who um, does that. So we're Instagram, Facebook. Oh. Um, we have a YouTube channel. Um, oh. So uh, that's wonderful. Um, as far as other ways of finding out what we do, um, if you are a donor, then um, which is wonderful, we also then you'll get on our mailing list and you would receive our mailings. Um, we do an annual appeal that just actually will go out to about 10,000 folks uh, this month, uh, yeah. just right now. Um, we do several events during the year. Uh, we partner with arts and lectures and we bring in a, oh. a speaker. Oh, that's nice. Yes, um, usually in the spring or the fall mm -hmm. um, with a cancer focus. And so that's something for us to do. We've brought, we've brought uh, Mary Claire King, mm -hmm. who was the inventor of the BRCA gene, and that, she was mm. very interesting. Um, so we try to do things like that. We host um, lunches for our for ladies. We have a ladies lunch group, mm -hmm. um, and we have speakers that come in. So we try to do an education piece, a research piece. We also fund research, which is very important to the work that we do. Um, and we have a whole research department at the cancer center that um, all they do is is test tumors and see if yeah. any of our patients um, would fit the trials that we have offering. And so. You, meaning the foundation, raises money, and then you give grants, though, to other places. Like, I think I saw in your annual report, neighborhood clinics. You yes. give it to all kinds of places that are 
that are specifically focused on cancer? That have a, a component of a cancer. Uh -huh. So in the Neighborhood Clinics case, um, they have an outreach coordinator that um, reaches um, the underserved, which mm -hmm. is wonderful. And she actually goes out and tries to talk to um, those folks about getting screened, whether it's breast cancer or whether it's colorectal cancer. Mm -hmm. And then we also provide a grant for colorectal screenings at that um, so folks will, will learn more about it. It's very important to make sure we get those screenings. Yeah. Um, we support um, UCSB. We have, mm -hmm. a, they have a mentorship program. They have a student um, program every year. They uh, High school students in their senior year come for six weeks out of the summer, and if they have a focus on something that has to do with cancer, we help fund that. Uh, wow, they also have cool. a camp that's called Camp Kesem. That is, this is one of my favorite things, is that they, um, for parents with little children uh, that have been struggling with their parents going through cancer, they get to go to camp with other kids that um, have had the similar experience. So for up to 18 years old, we support kids with camp and they get to go to camp for a week for free. Oh gosh, And that's their siblings great. can go, so that's wonderful. Um, what else do we do? We support Cottage Hospital. They have a pediatric um, uh, cancer position that mm -hmm. we do support. Um, and we've, we, we do other things too. Teddy bear cancer, I think. We have supported teddy bear cancer mm -hmm. in the past, yes. Yeah, I think I saw that also mm -hmm. in your annual report. Yeah, your annual report is beautiful. I really Thank enjoyed you. reading that. Thank you, very proud of that this year. Yeah, you That's should good. be. Thank you. So um, let's say somebody's watching and they're thinking, hmm, I wonder how, not how, I was gonna say how I can get in there, not for a tour, but do I need a referral from my doctor in order to have one of these tests, or how, how do they make that connection? So if um, your primary care physician would probably be the, the first starting okay. point, or um, your OBGYN, and if you're getting an annual screening of some sort and they may detect something that doesn't feel right, um, oh. or you're not feeling well, and they're thinking, well, let's get a scan just to be safe. So the primary care physician would be the person or that, a doctor to refer you to receive one of those scans. So would that primary care just um, automatically uh, refer to the cancer center, or do you have to ask for it? Or in other words, are there other places that they might refer, but no, I wanna come to the, Cancer center. Yes. Yeah, so, um, if you are diagnosed with cancer, mm -hmm. and depending on what kind of cancer you have, um, then yes, um, most folks will get diagnosed, and then we'll call the cancer center. Okay. And they will fit you with the right person. So okay. we have many female oncologists, many mm -hmm. male oncologists, and our radiation department, oncology department, mm -hmm. um, they're incredible. They're five of the top doctors in the, yeah. in the United States, and. Uh, and so you may not have to get chemo, you may just need radiation, mm -hmm. and so either one um, would, would be after a diagnosis is made. Okay, gotcha. Yes. Wow, so Lori, we have a couple minutes left. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like our audience to know about the Cancer Foundation of Santa Barbara? Yes, um, it's just a, a, a wonderful, wonderful place. And, and I can share the story about Leslie, Lady Ridley Tree, when she, um, the reason she donated to the Cancer Foundation during the campaign was that her husband was diagnosed with cancer and was treated about 20 years ago mm -hmm. in the basement of Cottage mm -hmm. Hospital when we were called the Cancer Center. And I know that her heart ever since she was treated there because the doctors were so wonderful to him that she wanted to make sure that she could leave a yeah. legacy. So she said, okay, great. Um, so she was the real reason that kind of inspired everybody on the campaign um, to, to look up to her for philanthropy yeah. and she actually helped us tremendously with, with that one gift. So yeah. I wanna say that's a, a great story. That's great. Well, thank you so much for all the work that you're doing, all the important work and for coming on our show and telling our folks about it. Thank you so much, thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus and we'll see you next time.